evening, everyone. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. I welcome once again to our evening study. I uh, want to thank God for the blessings, uh, for his provision, for his hand of protection throughout the day, wherever we have been, we are all back home, safe and ready to partake of another study. Uh, before we start, I would like us to say a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear loving and heavenly Father, we thank you this Thursday evening for your protection wherever we have been. We thank you, Father, that we've been able to do whatever we had to do today. We thank you that you've been able to take us on the highways and on the byways and that you've brought us all back safely. We thank you, Father, for your hand of protection. We thank you for this time that we are preparing to partake of your word. Father, we pray in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, that as we gather to learn more of you, that you may be our teacher, dear Lord. We ask, dear Lord, that you may hasten the footsteps of those that are coming to join us. We pray for Brother Muhasa that is continuing to share the word as he has prepared. Father, you know his heart and what he is looking to share. So, Father, we pray that you bless his lips. May the words that come forth be your words, dear Lord. And at the end of it, Father, we pray that we, were, we will all be blessed to the glory of your name. We ask all this in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, we are going to sing one song. Um, before we hand over to Elder, to Brother Mahasa, sorry. Uh, we'll sing hymn number 10. Um, and if anybody would like to take um, a stanza, it's three stanzas. We will do the first one, hymn number 10. Come Christians, join and sing. We'll do two. Lovely, thank you very much. Anybody for three? We'll do three, okay? Uh, let's start. Come, Christians, join to sing. Hallelujah, amen. Loud praise to Christ our King. Hallelujah, amen. Let all with heart and voice before his throne rejoice. Praise his, his gracious truth. Hallelujah, amen. Come lift your hearts on high. Hallelujah, amen. Let praises fill the sky. Hallelujah, amen. Is our guide and friend to us, he'll condescend. His love shall never end. Hallelujah, amen. Praise yet our Christ again. Hallelujah, amen. Life shall not end the strain. Hallelujah, amen. All heaven's blissful show, his goodness will adore, singing forevermore. Hallelujah, amen. Amen. 
Thank you very much for taking part in song service. Um, I'll now have uh, Sasha do us a meditational before we get into our study. So Sasha will do a meditational song and then uh, the next voice you will hear will be that of Brother Mahasa. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Um, today, this the song that I'll be singing today is still, and some of the courses will be sing song in Uganda. Hide me now under your Cover me within your mighty hand when the oceans rise and thunders roar. I will soar with you above the storm, Father. You are King over. And I will be still and know you, my God. Find rest, my soul, in Christ alone. Know his power in quietness. And trust. I say, So, uh, Sister Sylvia and uh, all of us that are congregated here on uh, this platform, uh, you are welcome. Uh, we thank God that He has uh, preserved us, He has allowed us to still uh, be here. Uh, it is not by any mistake or chance. He's got a purpose uh, for us. Uh, saints, you're welcome once again. And uh, as we look, continue with our study, uh, let's uh, pray, let's invite the presence of God uh, so that uh, we can start to look into the words of life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, good God. Thank you for your goodness and your mercies and your patience towards us, O oh Lord. Thank you for the grace 
that was extended unto us on the cross. Thank you for that precious blood that was shed for us. For without uh, your son, without his worthy sacrifice, there can no, not be anyone that can come to you by themselves. Through Christ only can we come to you and even attempt to call upon your name. So we ask, Father, that you bless us with thy presence. Lord, subdue us, especially me, and uh, talk uh, through me. And uh, bless each one of us. Give us uh, minds and uh, our hearts, receptive hearts, uh, ready to receive the word of God. Let us see for ourselves what uh, you want us to learn. So God, please forgive me of all sin, everything that I've allowed myself to get involved in that is not like you, oh Lord, please take it. Forgive me again. And every one of us, and even those who will be joining us later, we pray for them. We pray for your work, Father. Thank you, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 So since today we are going to, if we can uh, see my screen there, we are going to look into the gospel plan using the blueprint, the sanctuary. So we seek to prepare as we seek to prepare for the second coming. Uh, just a second. Just a second. Bear with me for a second. As we seek to prepare for the coming of the Lord, we have seen that uh, uh, we need to be in the right spiritual state, a sinless state, a state where we have overcome sin through the indwelling of uh, Christ Jesus himself, led by his spirit, and him fully, uh, fully repeated in our characters, without his righteousness, without uh, him, leading us and us dead to self, we cannot stand in the presence of a sinless God when Jesus Christ lives, lives the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Jesus Christ, as we saw, is the present truth because it says, I am, I am, that is the present tense. So he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So all truth that is not centered in Christ is not truth in the first place. So everything that we believe, Christ is central to it. So today we're just going to look into the sanctuary, into uh, the plan of redemption, let me say. And... Uh, and... Uh, as we have understood that, as we prepare, we've also got to share the message uh, that we receive freely. We have received freely the wish. So those who do not know, we have a truth, especially this truth centered in the, in the understanding of the sanctuary. That is the truth that has been uh, given us down the ages. I mean, uh, the truth that brought about the Seventh-day Adventist church. That's the only truth as we will learn. I mean, we have come to understand that we have contributed uh, to Christianity. And that is the ultimate truth. So our subject today will be uh, the lamb that did it. Remember, uh, 
our theme is to prepare to meet our God. As Amos 4.12 tells us, uh, Amos chapter 4 verse 12 tells us, Therefore thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. So as we prepare, we are admonished also to share. So we're saying um, tonight, the lamb that did it, the first instance we use the word lamb straight away. It is every word that is used in, used in the scriptures uh, is not carelessly or aimlessly uh, put there. It is put there for a purpose. And we know that lamb, the name lamb, it is just uh, not uh, a there uh, like we understand it these days or uh, all the other Christians. Uh, where they draw a picture of Jesus Christ uh, holding a lamb. Uh, Jesus as a shepherd with a little lamb in his arm. He was the lamb. Uh, that the Old Testament sanctuary appointed to. So as we mentioned the word lamb straight away, our minds go uh, to Jesus Christ, the lamb. Uh, that was uh, slain from the foundation of the world. Also, the lamb uh, that was used as a, a sacrifice throughout uh, the Old Testament, the lamb that was uh, slain for the forgiveness of a sin. So it is a, a sanctuary a language. The question is tonight, do we understand the plan of redemption? We all, we definitely understand it, the few of us who are congregated here, uh, but we're going to look at it in a simplistic form and how we can share this truth uh, with uh, especially uh, those of our brothers who are not of our denomination uh, to understand uh, the plan of redemption. As Christian, we read here, uh, we look to Christ alone for our redemption and sal or salvation, which is a uh, very right. And we all accept on that one. Many today claim the benefits of Christ's redemptive work, but fail to recognize the depth of the plan. There is a plan. We know our God is a God of order. So uh, he, uh, without a mistake. He has chosen a way to save man, and that way of saving man uh, is in the blueprint, the blueprint being the sanctuary. And we know the sanctuary, uh, we understand it is God, the outer court, uh, the holy place, and the most holy place. We, uh, our, ours is not to choose how we should be saved. The one who has died for, for us, the one whose blood is the only one that can save us, he's the one who chooses how me and you can be saved. And this is ordained uh, way uh, that he has set up that we should uh, be saved. So we see that Jesus has got to do his part as the lamb, and that was finished on the cross and after that the ministry his ministry as a high priest because we agree that he is our high priest in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary right now that ministry also is continuing so there cannot be full redemption without uh, the part that was played as i mean not let me not even use the word play the part that was uh, uh, the part of his ministry as a lamb that was finished as we have already identified and the part as a high priest that continues in heaven right now. So that is what we Adventists come with on, uh, let me say, the larger table of Christianity. And that is the ultimate truth uh, that we can share with our brothers and sisters of the other denominations today. For we see that without the understanding of the plan, the full plan, the, its depth, in depth, 
there cannot be salvation. What exactly is Christ's work as a redeemer and what are the steps involved? That's what we want to look at. What are the steps involved? According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, is to buy back, to free from captivity by payment of ransom, to help to overcome something detrimental, to help to overcome something harmful, to free from the consequences of sin. So there is that redeeming is to buy back, to free from captivity by paying a ransom. And now we see that Jesus did on the cross. He paid the ransom. He paid for your sin and my sin. While many easy enough ultimately accept freedom from the consequences of sin, very few see in the plan Christ's work in helping us overcome sin. Yes, he died on the cross and that sacrifice fully paid that, I mean, for your sin and my sin. We accept us accept that part, all of us as Christians. But Christianity at large struggles at this point where Jesus now is working right now to help us overcome sin. The sacrifice on the cross, of course, was enough. That blood was enough. It, the strength was provided for us to overcome sin. But human beings have got to be reminded that, yes, that work is continuing in the heavenly, especially in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, where, where Jesus is cleansing, getting rid of the sin that is accumulated there. The twofold plan of salvation According to, to the Bible, Christ's work in the redemption plan as a lamb is to buy us back for God. According to the Bible, Christ's work in the redemption plan as a lamb is to buy us back. And that we have seen he has bought us, he has done that, yes. Well, we learn that while the lamb does this, in fact, it takes Jesus as priest to bring us back to God, to help us overcome that which has separated us from God. We know what has separated us from God is sin, as we see in Isaiah chapter 59, 1 and 2. Let us quickly read that one there, chapter 15, Isaiah chapter 59, uh, verse 1. We read that. Lord's hand is not shortened that he, it cannot save, neither his hair heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So our sins separate us from our creator. But we see that through Christ, uh, um, work in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary and our cooperation. Yes, we can have access to God today and now. To pay the price and yet leave the purchase on the counter isn't the plan at all. That is not the plan. So this is how we can explain to our brothers that, and sisters that Jesus has paid the full price, but he's got us to bring us back his ministry continues. So he is bringing us back as in redeeming us back to his father through his service for you and me in the heavenly sanctuary. As a lamb, Jesus bought us with a price as we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. As a priest, he help, helps us overcome our sin so that we can finally go home. Uh, let's uh, look at uh, uh, Hebrews 
let's see this fact for ourselves here. Hebrews, just reminding us. I mean, it's like a reminder course on how simple uh, we, in a simple, simplified way, we can walk through uh, this uh, plan of redemption to see how we can uh, help our brothers who do not understand uh, these facts or wonderful truth that we know. As a priest, Jesus is a high priest. We uh, see that in the, especially prominent in the book of Hebrews uh, through Paul. It's, it reads in chapter 8, verse 1, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. So there we identify that Christ is also now a high priest uh, in uh, the sanctuary in heaven. The love of God for humanity. Let's use this most famous, the most famous text, which we know, uh, John 3, 16. The most famous text in the Bible, uh, uh, text in all of the Bible today contains all the necessary elements for us to begin to understand God's plan of redemption. In that text, John uh, chapter 3, John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world, he loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal uh, everlasting uh, life. So here we see there is love towards the world. So uh, then we see he gives his son that whosoever believes should not perish but have eternal life. So even in that text, we can see the plan of redemption, but we see there the purpose. I mean, the first, I mean, uh, I mean uh, few words that come is that the love of God for humanity to give a son. So the very first thing we learn from this text is God's motivation, the motivation for putting this plan into effect. It wasn't for power. It wasn't to criticize or condemn people, but it was because of love. God is not moved by any selfish motivation to gain for himself. He is moved only by his underlying love for you and me. So that is the motivation. And we see that in John 3, 16. Yes, we see that through uh, the plan of redemption. We see that through the sanctuary service, through the ministry of Jesus Christ, uh, as it is plainly or in a more easier way laid out in the sanctuary. So understanding the sanctuary is vital for all Christians, Seventh-day Adventists or non-Seventh-day Adventists. And we believe that the truth that has been given us is for us to share for, I mean, to share for humanity. As that verse says, there are three reasons to this plan according to John 3, 16. We have seen that. So we are walking through the phases now. We're going to start to walk through the phases. Phase one, this, we shall see phase two, and then we shall see phase three. So according to the study tonight, uh, there's somebody's uh, uh, mic that is unmuted. If we can mute our mics, all of us, please. The first phase of the plan involves the death of the sinner. The sinner is the responsible party. So there we see uh, that death has got to happen. Yes, as in a sacrifice. This is necessary not because God desires his pound of flesh, Let's see why we have put that wording is coming up like that. Let's go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 32. That's the meaning of this statement here. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 32 tells us, For I have no pleasure in the death of 
him that dieth. God doesn't have pleasure in your death and my death. Say, I mean, says the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourself, turn yourselves and live. Yeah, he doesn't have pleasure in your death. But because sin demands that price. We see that sin demands the price. Why? Let's see Romans uh, 6. We want to see this from the scriptures ourselves in a more simplistic way. So Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Why? Uh, the sin demand that price. For the wages of sin, as we saw also earlier this week, is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we see uh, God, uh, what he has for us is the will of God for us is even eternal life. But we cannot forget that eternal life, as Romans chapter 6 verse 23 tells us, is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We continue uh, to read that is the very nature of sin. It destroys who hold on to it. So sin destroys how? Let's see uh, Proverbs 5.22. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 22 tells us, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. No, sorry, Proverbs chapter 5, verse 22. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holding with the cords of his sins. So you see there, my sins, my iniquities shall take me. Now, if I am found to be, a, I mean, uh, with this iniquit iniquitous uh, nature, shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sin. So you dwell in sin, the sin uh, will hold uh, you and uh, lead you, of course, to death. The Bible declares the soul that sins, it shall die. In order to die for us, then Christ would have to be more than a substitute. Remember, the soul that sins, it shall die. Well, these are the wages of a, a sin, death. So we see here another concept coming. How does Jesus come in now? To save us in order to die for us then christ would have to be more than a substitute he would need to actually become us so jesus becomes you and me and that's what he did when he came here on earth. he partook of this uh sinful uh, uh flesh he became like one uh, uh i mean uh one of us, like us, he was subject to temptation, but of course, he did not sin. So in order to die, we see that he has to become, he actually has to become like you and me. In order to die for anyone, Christ must die as that man. That is what he has done. We can uh, read Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20, to see that fact for ourselves.
Yes, I think we're back on together. I lost it. I lost you there for a second. Sorry. Um, Sister Lynn, if you can enable me to share the screen again. Uh, Sister Lynn, you're with us. Just a second, Saints. Uh, my internet is not stable. Your co host, Brother Martin, you should be able to do it now. Okay, I am now. It, my screen is just. Uh, okay, thank you, Sister Anne. Okay. Okay, just a second. So we're looking at Galatians. We can uh, meanwhile look at Galatians chapter 2, verse uh, 20. We are identifying uh, that uh, the soul uh, that sins, uh, the soul that sins dies. Uh, let's see. I want to share this uh, information with you. Okay. Let's, uh, just a second. Just a second. Okay. Just a second. Okay. Um, okay, just a second. I seem to have lost most of this information. Show presenter view. That's the one I want. Amen, amen. So Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. So sorry for that, saints. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, uh, we are told uh, that um, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So we see there. Uh, that Christ uh, um, lives, I mean, uh, in us. So we die uh, with uh, Christ. I mean, we are crucified with him. We die is death, but again, spiritually, uh, through faith, we are alive, but not us. It says that nevertheless, I live as I'm crucified, Nevertheless, I continue to live, but it's not I, it is Christ who lives in me. So the life that I live is not the life of self, it's the life of Christ, uh, Christ in you. Uh, as we understand that text also in Colossians, as a Christ in you, the hope of glory. Phase two, phase two involves the everlasting removal of that which causes death. Sin. So we're looking at this plan in a more simplistic uh, way uh, before we can uh, fully introduce it as it is in Levit Leviticus chapter 16, as it was in uh, uh, I think you've lost Brother Martin. Let's see if he tries to get back in. 